Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. Well, if the weather stays like this, open water fishing's just around the corner. My guest this week is Jerry Weigel. Jerry is a fisheries development project leader, basically our, our stocking leader, as it were. We're gonna talk about some ways that you can use the Game and Fish website to improve your chances on the water this spring and summer. Jerry, first off, let's talk about the stocking reports that are listed on the website. You have one of the most intriguing jobs in Game and Fish in that you actually deliver the fish to each individual lake. Right, yeah, no, there's just a team of us that uh, take the fish to the lakes, but uh, as far as the information, uh, we kind of made some changes to the website, so if folks want to find it now, uh, go on the website and look for where to fish. And once you're on there, you'll find uh, uh, a couple options to access the stocking data. One is uh, printable PDF files that they can uh, open up on their uh, web browser on their computer. Um, also, if you want to have a stocking list for some reason on your smartphone when you're out and about, the same thing, uh, PDF files will just download on your smartphone. You can have that information with you all the time. Um, and, and the stock information is actually updated daily. So during the summer season when we're stocking fish, I mean, it's, it's as up to date within uh, days of the fish being stocked. Where, and about the only thing this is really important for, it would say uh, catchable trout when we're stocking trout in the spring. I know we get a lot of calls and folks want to know, hey, has hey, is so-and-so lake been stocked with trout? Because uh, those fish are ready to catch as soon as they hit the water. So. This may seem pretty obvious, but let's talk about what people should look for when they go on the stocking reports and maybe what they should avoid yeah. uh, actually for lakes. Well, the, the, the first thing is, is uh, you know, the overwhelming majority of the fish we stock are, you know, a couple inches or smaller in length. So they're generally fish that are really for the future, two, three years away. Um, other than the catchable trout, um, you could use those as an indicator uh, to look at stockings that have occurred in the past. Don't look for stockings this past spring or just even last year because those fish will be far too small. And, and along those lines, folks might be aware that we stocked a certain lake and yet they don't see it on our stocking list. And what, what's going on there is if we're starting out brand new lakes and we've just got juvenile fish, fish that are too small to be caught, we won't actually list it on our stocking, our, our stocking list because we only want to list lakes that are actually ready to catch ready to go. So. What are they going to find when they log into these stocking reports? I mean, it actually tells you what species and the number of fish that are put into each individual lake. Right, right, right. Yeah, no numbers, uh, the species. Um, um, I, I don't think we list the date necessarily, but uh, and it goes back you four list or five the year, though, the year. Year, year, yes, and it goes back four or five years. And and again, I, I I want folks to key in. Other than trout, it's just a general indicator because we're pretty aggressive in our stocking. Um, so uh, if if we're not stocking a lake, that doesn't mean we're giving up on it necessarily because we hope through survey information that we find lakes that are actually reproducing enough on their own that we don't really need to stock. And, and in fact, a lot of our stocking is just a maintenance stocking. So North Dakota is blessed with our hatchery capabilities. So we're able to err on putting some uh, maintenance stocking. Stocking, and we're, you know, we're, not, we're gonna gamble that we're not sure if the fish, the mother nature is gonna do, produce enough fish. Sure. So we'll stock it just to ensure it you know, because in most cases that, that isn't necessarily going to harm uh, by putting too many fish out there. So. Most of these, though, you've used to develop new fisheries over the years. Absolutely. You know, with all the high water, we've got a tremendous amount of new lakes out there. And, and so we've had a real big challenge to try to get them up and going. And, and you, you know, you, generally you want to get, get uh, things stocked in your classes three, four years, five years. And so... Um, we're just really reaching that point where we maybe can start to back off stocking on a few lakes now. But uh, lots of phenomenal fisheries out there right now. Jerry, one of the most useful tools on the website is the lake maps. Right, right. No, it's, it's, uh, we're really fortunate there too. It started, you know, almost uh, uh, getting close to 20 years ago now when we mapped the first lakes. But we pretty much have most of our better lakes mapped across the state. And these are uh, t topographic depth maps. Um, and, and, and you can access them both on our website, go under Where to Fish, and uh, they're, they'll all be listed there too. Um, the other thing is, is what's cool about that is on your smartphone is the same list that you would get 
that has like the driving directions and those things, there's going to be a little hyperlink right there that you can access the depth maps. And on your uh, smartphone, when you it becomes a download. So even if you're in an area of no service, you have the file still on your phone. You can use it. Um, you know, and, and again, throughout the state, we have most of these lakes covered. So they are topographical maps. They're just like what you'd see, say, on a Lawrence or a hummingbird in your boat. Now would be a good time, uh, as open water starts to become available and things like that, to get together with fishing buddies and uh, sit down, maybe go over a few maps. Uh, here's a point here, or, or here's some deep water here. Maybe find some new places to fish. Well, and one little thing that's kind of uh, real subtle on these printed maps is we actually have uh, latitude, longitude grid lines, you know, which if you're using your GPS, it might, it'll make sense. So you can actually mark a spot on a, on a paper map and um, you can actually turn that into a coordinate and if you want, it with not too much difficulty and get fairly close to that. Um, the other thing is, as I wanna tell folks, is um, all the lakes that we have on the website as far as directions to them and that, they're gonna be lakes that you can actually catch fish. Um, if we have a lake that has either had a winter kill or, uh, you know, for some reason there's not fish of size yet, um, it, we actually don't list it on our website. So if they see a lake that they knew in the past had fish uh, and it doesn't show up, it, that, that's likely the case, that it's uh, suffered some winter or summer kill and we're just temporarily taking it off, our, off the list. You mentioned that uh, these same services are available on your phone. They're not available, of course, on some of the old flip phones and things like that. You've got to have a a smartphone, right, right, but, right. Uh, really, really handy. Well, and again, on a smartphone, because you basically have an internet browser on your smartphone the same way we do on our computer, you can ask, access just the basic uh, information on our website, the, uh, the uh, where to fish, whether it's the, uh, um, the PDF files. But you also, if you go out, uh, there's, there's uh, on ESRI, uh, it, uh, there's a link right on our website, you can actually download an app, and with that app, you can download, say, the, uh, the topographic maps. You can download, um, you know, just a list of lakes across the state. And what that it's gonna be is you can actually use your smartphone, it'll turn its uh, GPS on. And when you're actually on the water, you'll be able to see the contours right on your, right on your phone and, and your, and your uh, GPS and your phone will triangulate where you're at. And it's really uh, neat stuff. High technology yeah. fishing. Well, and again, the great thing is, is with all the new lakes, there's just a lot of people, where are these lakes at and where is this stuff? And, and that's the other thing I want to point out is we try to list as far as with the lakes, we list the driving directions to them that should get you to the public access, the public preferred way to get to the water. Um, we try to list a little short sentence or two about what kind of fishing you can expect to get. Uh, that are, that's occurring, what size fish, just general, a couple general statements. And then again, any of the facilities, whether it has a boat ramp, um, a fish cleaning station, things like that. And, and again, these things are also available for the well-known Devil's Lake, Lake Sakakawea, which we have a lot, a lot of detail on the facilities that folks can expect to find there. All right, Jerry, thanks. You bet. As long as we're talking about open water fishing, we should remind you about boat registrations. If you purchased a new boat over the winter, you need to get it registered with the Game and Fish Department. For your convenience, you can register online and generate a 10-day temporary permit that's valid until the registration is processed if you purchased a used boat from an individual. Make sure you have proof of transfer of ownership, such as a photocopy of the previous owner's registration card, a canceled check, or a signed note from the previous owner stating the transfer of ownership. You can print out a registration form from the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov, mail that in with a proper fee and proof of ownership, or you can stop by the Game and Fish headquarters in Bismarck and take care of your paperwork. And here's another reminder, you need a new fishing license on April 1st. You can take care of that chore online, again, at gf.nd.gov, or purchase a new one at various licensed vendors around the state. For Jerry Weigel and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.